Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Dana again. And today you're at Research Road, and it's the 10th of September, 2024. On this date in 2008, the Large Hadron Collider was powered up for the first time. We're still working on the new visuals. That's turning out to be a little more difficult than we thought. But we wanted something unique. So, starting off with tech news, researchers at the University of Alaska Fairbanks are looking into an AI answer to predict in major earthquakes. If successful, they might be able to forecast earthquakes months in advance. That's the type of thing that will shake up the science world and probably homeowners insurance. Scientists made living mice transparent using a common food dye. This outrageous headline is really about how light works. The dye's molecules absorb blue light and ultraviolet light, which helps light pass through the skin of mice. This achieves, quote, complete optical transparency in the red region of the visible spectrum. When the dye is washed away, everything returns to normal. This dye can allow you to see through a mouse, but I still can't get a decent hair dye. And now on to space. A coronal mass ejection occurred on Sunday. A CME is when the sun spews out material into space. This CME was in the direction of Earth and should reach here um, today. But don't worry, it isn't the beginning of a disaster movie. Its main noticeable effect will probably be the appearance of the northern lights, which should occur on Tuesday and Wednesday. There is the belief that the elusive Planet 9, sometimes called Planet X, will be found next year. Planet 9 is a theoretical planet beyond those that have been observed in our solar system. It's never been observed, but modeling says it should be there. The hope is that new capabilities in the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, which will be opening soon, might lead to it being seen. NASA's Perseverance rover is dealing with a dust storm on Mars, but experts say it should be fine and persevere through the storm. Come on, let me have that one. It was right there. The Polaris Dawn mission has still not launched. Its original launch date was August 27th. The five-day trip has been delayed multiple times, and it appears the delays are all weather-related. With the current weather picture around the splashdown sites, it's unclear when the launch will occur. We recently talked about a NASA project testing a solar sail, reporting surface saying the spacecraft might be tumbling or wobbling in orbit. That led to speculation that there might be something wrong. A NASA public affairs person said, quote, the spacecraft is currently tumbling as part of a planned sail deployment sequence. There has been some skepticism expressed, due in large part to the early statements about the Boeing Starliner situation. Now it's time to talk about the developing climate crisis. The United States is reportedly pushing China to adopt ambitious climate change goals. The U.S. reportedly wants China to embrace deep emission cuts by 2035. I'm sure that was probably an interesting conversation. The second largest polluter in the world telling the largest polluter to do a better job. We should probably be thankful the two countries are actually engaging on this topic. When it comes to this subject, the U.S. and China definitely set trends for the rest of the world, and there hasn't been a lot of solid international movement on the issue. When whatever agreement is reached is presented to the rest of the world, let's hope nobody chokes on the irony. The Biden administration launched a multi-billion dollar project aimed at providing rural areas all over the country with clean energy. Bell has a video on it, and I'll put it down below. I agree with her. It's a good start. In related U.S. clean energy news, the Bureau of Land Management is looking at opening up more than 30 million acres to solar development. If you're not familiar with how these rules work, there is almost zero chance that all 30 million acres will be used for solar. It's more along the lines of the land could possibly be used for that purpose. Across the Atlantic, the U.K. is looking at getting nine new offshore wind farms. The EU's Copernicus Climate Change Service has said that this summer was the hottest on record, and it will likely lead to this being the hottest year on record so far. In the world of animals, a new species of tarantula was identified in Arizona by a team from the University of Idaho. I'm just wondering why there's constantly new developments about giant spiders. If this is your passion, it's definitely time to enter the field.
it seems to be the golden age of giant spider discoveries. With all of the constant production of new articles on the topic, I have to ask if there's an arachnophobia reboot coming soon. Researchers are saying that gray reef sharks are moving away from reefs and toward cooler waters. The behavior is not only a sign of trouble for the climate and the sharks themselves, but also for the reefs. The sharks are a needed part of the reef ecosystem. In California, a large number of new pups is boosting the gray wolf population in the states, continuing an amazing comeback and conservation story. In health news, the U.S. confirmed its first case of bird flu in a person with no known exposure to sick animals. The incident occurred in Missouri, and the CDC is investigating. They currently say the risk to the general public is still low. Syphilis is at its highest levels in the United States since the 1950s. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the number of reported cases per year was normally less than 40,000. In 2022, there were more than 200,000 reported cases. Experts point to poorly funded prevention programs as a reason for the climb. Now let's dig up the past a little. State archaeologists in Connecticut are asking people to not take unearthed artifacts and to return any taken after the recent flooding. They are aware of some people taking artifacts from Southford Falls State Park in Southbury. They're asking people to contact the Office of State Archaeology if they took anything. While making the plea to return the artifacts, Deputy State Historic Preservation Officer Catherine Labadia is reported as saying, nobody will be getting in trouble if they did take anything. In similar news, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts has returned a necklace to Turkey. 2,700-year-old elements in the necklace were likely stolen from a tomb in Turkey in 1976. Representatives of the Turkish government have reportedly already picked up the necklace. And now on to oddities. According to a YouGov survey, 46% of Americans did not read a book last year. So, I wasn't really sure where to put this one. It's not really odd, but it doesn't fit anywhere else. Research led by a representative from Ocean University in China has developed a pretty clear picture of plate tectonics over the last 1.8 billion years. There's even a video, and it's available on YouTube. I'll make sure to put a link down below. Just be warned, it starts in the present day and goes back in time, which is the opposite of how these videos normally work. I just found it interesting because it provides a very clear representation of our current understanding of the Earth's past. This week's quote is attributed to Lydia Millet. For almost two centuries, American gray wolves, vilified in fact as well as fiction, were the victims of vicious government extermination programs. By the time the Endangered Species Act was passed in 1973, only a few hundred of these once great predators were left in the lower 48 states. So that's all the data we have to date. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again soon.